All right, hello everyone. It's finally time to play Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater. I'm I'm very excited. You've all been so patient, um, but it's going to be it's going to be a blast. Uh, I've, I've done I've compiled my thoughts. I've had some time to breathe, some time to think about the uh, about the experience that was Metal Gear Solid 2, and I goddamn loved that game. It was so good. So I'm really excited to see what Metal Gear Solid 3 has in store. All of you were talking about how. It, like gameplay story wise this is the Metal Gear Solid game so I'm excited for this while I've been sitting here waiting to do my intro I realized that this is weirdly customizable there's so many things uh, so many things that I can do to this menu <laughs> it's a uh, strange you can speed it up you can slow it down you can change whether it's a blue or a black shadow uh, zoom it in zoom it out um, invert the, uh, the main color scheme it's great. It's interactive. Guys, I just I'm very grateful that I get to play these games and you get to watch them and love them and comment with me and be passionate about, you know, someone playing this for the first time. So, as as always guys, let me know how you're feeling. I really love the interaction. I love seeing the fact that you're liking it, that you're like commenting and talking about it. It's really really good. Let's play Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater. It's probably been too long since I've played a Metal Gear Solid game, but with the change in gameplay mechanics, I should be able to uh, should be able to adjust and uh, and get used to it and uh, have a, have a lot of fun. I'm genuinely excited to see the the fact that we're going back into the past, 1970s, right? I believe. I'll press start and uh, I'll get into it because it should just give me a bit of the information. So, we can play the first two Metal Gear games in here. Um, you know, a photo album that has no data in it. Let me just quickly go back to the game select because I think that's where it tells me, yes, 1964, I was gonna say 1974. Right, so Metal Gear Solid 3, Virtuous Mission and Operation Snake Eater. Um, and then we've got our lovely instruction manual, which talks about our uh, our controls. So the equipment window and the weapon window are the same. We can switch to first person view, left bumper to aim. This is still pretty much the pretty much the same, uh, which is really good. A lot of these are pretty much all of this is the same. There's just going to be different ways to to play and adjust uh, the like the camera angle and stuff. I'm actually really curious to try the third person camera angle because that's where I think maybe my my style of gameplay might shine and improve but we will we will see but uh it's a stealth game Metal Gear Solid 3 is a 3D action adventure game that lets you experience the thrill of sneaking past the enemy without being seen you play the role of snake you must infiltrate enemy territory and carry out a top secret mission so Basically, basically is the same. Play a character, Snake. A disciple of the legendary hero, The Boss. He joined Fox after serving in the CIA and spending several years as a Green Beret. His code name for this mission is Naked Snake. Snake specializes in a covert operation in covert operations and is a seasoned combat veteran. Proficient in all types of military equipment and weaponry, he is also a master of CQC. Close range fighting technique he developed along with the boss. I'm assuming Snake, Naked Snake, is uh, should be because this is in the past, way before the first the first two games I played, this is Big Boss. Which is Snake's dad, Solid Snake's daddy. Um, so it looks like that there is someone above Big Boss called The Boss. So he developed a fighting technique along with The Boss. So he went from being Naked Snake to Solid Snake to Liquid Snake to Snake Snake, Slippery Snake, Naked Snake. Um, this is the story, so I might just not, I might just not read this. 
because I don't know if that is, um, if this will spoil the game. I mean, it's the instruction manual. Um, if that is relevant information that is like background information that I should read going into it, let me know and I'll do it in the next episode. Um, obviously, next episode might be the next one I record after I've posted, so there might be a delay in that as I give you a couple of episodes in the first week um, with Metal Gear Solid. Uh, normal options, which I'll have a look into. Um, difficulty level, I will just, I will be playing it at normal. I'll still be playing at normal. Um, yeah, game screen. I'm sure this will all be shown to us as well in the game. They've, uh, they've tend like the previous games have done a pretty good job of that. And camera views, there we go. We just press down on the right stick to toggle in between those modes, which is awesome. First episode, guys, and I know you guys are passionate about me taking in everything I can about this game. So I'm going to be making sure I've got everything. And by everything, I mean not everything, but as much as I can. All of the actions and what you can do with CQC is awesome. A lot of this is going to be shown to us in the game, so that's why I'm like kind of just having a look. To replenish stamina, Snake must find and catch food. Oh, that is interesting. Enemy status, the radio. So we don't have a codec, it's a radio. Radio mode allows Snake to talk to a variety of support characters. Each of these specialists will provide Snake with valuable information, such as tactical hints. If you have stuck, if you become stuck, or simply have something on your mind, use radio mode. Now, these episodes, in terms of length, we'll figure it out. But this is the game that has been hammered into me of use the codec call a lot and frequently, uh, because there's so much in this game. So, I think. What I will be doing in particular is just being natural as possible with the gameplay, which should lengthen the episode. So there'll be some nice long ones for you that include all of my codex. But if uh, there's long periods of me not really getting anything out of the codex or like sort of like it's a bit of like a dead moment in the game, we'll, we'll cut it out for time. But I'll figure that out. I'll figure that out as we go along. Face paint changing uniforms the effectiveness of the face face paint this is going to be so good because this is like the 60s we get to go back to the old technology um but it's still i reckon we'll still have some fancy pants secret metal gear related cool technology still <laughs> that'll be like this isn't technology that's made public because it's secret top gear metal stuff Special weapon features attaching and removing a suppressor. Be careful. Sniper rifle magnification. You can switch between semi auto, full auto, and burst, which is amazing. When, a, when the snake's stamina gauge is depleted, his abilities suffer. Still got tranquilizers. We, got, we can do more hold up still. Shaking down the bodies of the unconscious so we can steal items as well. Jump out shot so. When you're in the corner of you, press the X button to jump out and point the gun. Yeah, okay, so we've got a lot of the same techniques from, from Metal Gear Solid 2, which is good. Capture an enemy using close quarters combat, press the left stick button to threaten the enemy with a knife and interrogate him. I'm going to have to really work hard to remember all of these different tactics. <laughs> so many primary weapons and equipment. I kind of want to get surprised at some of the things that we find along the way, so I'm sure whenever that equipment comes up, I'll be, you know, given that information. It also has the story of Metal Gear and Metal Gear 2. Please note that certain parts of the game have been modified from the original for various reasons. Better playability suited to the platform. I could see us playing... I could see us playing Metal Gear and Metal Gear 2, considering it's actually available in this game. We'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that another time. Snake. The boss. Zero. Paramedic. Great name. Eva. Ocelot's in this game. Of course he is. 
And this is pre Liquid Snake Arm Ocelot. Pre um pre Foxhound? No, this would be would this be Foxhound? I don't know. Hmm. I'm get this is me trying to remember where people are. This is why there's so many things. I literally have a uh, I literally have a document that I was writing up that I haven't filled in a bit, but have a have a look. <laughs> All right, so here's my here's my little work document, right? Where I've just been taking down. I have like a bunch of notes and people where literally ocelot is uh, ocelots in everything. <laughs> uh, but yeah, story details, foxhound, next generation special forces, all of the groups, uh, the deal with the patriots. Key words, uh, stuff about ocelot, stuff about gray fox. Stuff about particular characters, uh, stuff about Arsenal gear, and then all of this stuff. So I have little keywords to to refer to refer back to and uh, and think about, right? So <laughs> uh, I need to make that chart bigger, and I need to add more to it because I kind of that was right after I uh, finished Metal Gear Solid 2. I was just like all the algebra and the numbers in my in my head of writing a bunch of stuff. So. Eva and Ocelot, uh, Sokolov, Sokolov, Sokolov seems better, Volgan, we'll call you Virgin, uh, Sigent, Sigent, The Fury, The Fury looks cool, dude's got a, dude's got a 1960s jetpack flamethrower thing going on, The End, The Pain, The Fear, The Sorrow, now these are names I can get behind. That's that's cool. I did not like the names that much in Metal Gear Solid 2 of Dead Cell. Like Vamp is just man, he's just literally a vampire. You called and you called him Vamp for short. Um, wasn't a fan. But these names, Metal Gear Solid One's names were great. Like Decoy Octopus, Revolver Ocelot, like. Nothing beats those names. So these are actually pretty cool. The sorrow, the fear, the pain, the end. The end is look cool. I love Metal Gear Solid artwork, dude. I love Metal Gear Solid artwork. Um, watch me go out and buy all of the art books that are available without spoiling myself when I can. There's a Metal Gear Solid 3 timeline leading up to the events and I'm just wondering like I don't think there's any game set before this one, right? Because I'm pretty sure you go Metal Gear Solid 3, and then there's stuff like Peace Walker and Portable Ops and stuff like that, and then eventually it goes into Ground Zeroes and Metal Gear Solid 5, and then Metal Gear Solid 4 is all the way after Metal Gear Solid 2. So it looks like this is just, you know, Metal Gear Solid 3's timeline of events, but I think this is just... <laughs> 1963 in August, Hideo Kojima born. So funny. James Bond movie from Russia with love released. I love that movie. Amazing. All right, guys, I finished I finished the book and I've taken up so much of your time just setting this up. But again, I want that to be because I want you to know I'm so excited. I've been highly anticipating playing this as much as you've been highly anticipating watching it. It deserves that attention for me to just go, okay, what's going on? Appreciate all the artwork, appreciate the story. Not reading this text just so I can have the story come on as we go. Um, so what I'm going to summarize from this artwork though is that's Big Boss, Naked Snake, and that is the boss. Let's start the game. I'm so keen. So again, I want to like I want to apologize. It's 15 minutes of an introduction, but it's just to set up and I've, I've given you some pre uh, pre warning. I'll put it in the beginning of the video just to say, hey, introduction ends at 15 <laughs> minutes for me just ranting and being being very excited. But there we go, guys. The amazing Blue Point Games bringing this to life. And we also get different colorations with the um, with the start screen. That's cool. All right, guys, let's start game. Finally starting the game. Um, let's get into it. I'm playing Metal Gear Solid series for the first time. Oh, so instead of you just choosing the difficulty, they're just going to be like, haha. It's based on your play style. 
Uh, we just recently played Metal Gear Solid 2. Um, and I feel like that plays very similar. So I like Metal Gear Solid 2. Interesting. Okay, that also doesn't relate to the difficulty, but we're playing on normal. That might mean that might mean it influences the controls. All right, After we're going. We're going into World it. War II, the world was split into two, east and west. This marked the beginning of the era called the Cold War. David Hayner, baby, back. I'm glad that they didn't replace uh, the voice. Because, I mean, Liquid Snake had a different voice actor, so maybe Big Boss could have had a different voice actor as well. But no, they kept it David Hayter, because he looks the same. Guys, it's like I'm playing a movie with you. And then Bane has a bag over his head in the plane. It doesn't matter who we are. Flying over Pakistan. Altitude 30,000 feet. Approaching Soviet airspace. You're a big guy. 20 minutes for you. Off. Commencing internal depressurization. Equipment check. Our main parachute. The Before fire I... rises, Ready brother. Drop zone still showing a high pressure mass. Who's this? Cab okay. Good. We've got high visibility. Hideo, the madman, coming at it again with the prequel. I'm, I'm excited, guys. You have to bear with me. I'm pumped. Why does this guy look like a uh, smoking Raiden? Connecting oxygen hose to interior connector. It is. Put on your mask. Who are you, sir? Does this panty waist know what he's doing? <laughs> Release He's got Raiden's hair, but Raiden is a child. He said, "Put out the cigar and put on your mask." Full slow motion smoking. But the only guy who smokes is is Snick. Depressurization complete. Who the hell is this guy? Six minutes to drop off. Opening rear hatch. Metal Gear Solid Snake Eater. Sunrise. On the helmet? Guys, they got the name of the game on my helmet. External temperature minus 46 degrees Celsius. Two minutes to drop off. Stand up. You'll be falling at 130 miles per hour. Yoji Shinkawa, baby. We love your artwork. One minute to drop off. Move to the rear. Activate bail out bottle. This is one for the history books. The world's first halo jump. That dude does not sound like he'd be British. Stand by. Sorry, he doesn't look like he'd be British. Dude looks like. Dude literally looks like he would have like the voice of Roy Campbell, not the voice of Liquid Snake. I mean, if you want to, sure. That's fine. Directed by Hideo Kojima. Written by Hideo Kojima. Produced by and Hideo Kojima. News. The head of the CIA has finally given us the green light for the virtuous mission. Virtual mission? No, the virtuous mission. The future of our Fox unit depends on it. If it succeeds, we'll be officially organized into a unit. Fox. Virtuous mission. Foxhound. Sounds like some kind of initiation ritual. You know, don't get cocky. This isn't a training op. Right. Why is this James so Bond? what exactly is this wonderful mission? Well... This is so James About Bond. Years ago, a certain Soviet scientist requested asylum in the West through one of our moles. His name is Nikolai Stepanovich Sokolov. Sokolov. 
He's head of the OKB-754 Design Bureau, one of the Soviet's top secret weapon research facilities, and the East's foremost expert on weapons development. Sokolov, isn't he that famous rocket scientist? The very same. I'm writing notes. <laughs> on April the 12th, 1961, the Soviets achieved the first manned space flight in history. The Earth was blue, but there was no God. Well spoken. The rocket that carried Yuri Gagarin to orbit was the A-1, known as the Vostok rocket. Sokolov is said to be the man most responsible for the multi-engine cluster used in that rocket. After Gagarin's flight, Sokolov left rocket development to become the head of the newly established Design Bureau. From a lowly technician to head of a design bureau, that's quite a success story. So why do you want to defect? It seems he'd become afraid of his own creations. Afraid? Call it a crisis of conscience. And for that, he left his country and his family behind and went over the fence? Not exactly. One of his conditions was that his family was also to be taken safely to the West. We used a mole to get the family out first and succeeded in sneaking Sokolov over the Berlin Wall shortly afterwards. I was the one who conducted the operation. The security on the eastern side was still full of holes back then. Then what? We got Sokolov over in one piece, but the whole ordeal had left him exhausted, and we checked him into a hospital in West Berlin. It took him two weeks and more than 600 miles to get from the research facility in the Soviet Union to Berlin. He was in no condition to say anything coherent. And it was only a week later that we had something much bigger on our hands. The Cuban Missile Crisis. October the 16th, 1962, President Kennedy received word that the Soviets were in the process of deploying intermediate range ballistic missiles in Cuba. The President demanded. I won't have any of these Russians deploy missiles in Cuba. Announced a naval blockade to prevent Time to launch an attack. Cuba. But the Soviets didn't back down, instead, placing their armed forces on secondary alert. Soviet transport ships carrying missiles continued on course towards Cuba. US and Soviet forces went on alert for an all-out nuclear war. Frantic negotiations were conducted through the UN's Emergency Security Council and unofficial channels to end the hair-trigger standoff. Finally, on October the 28th, the Soviet Union agreed to remove its missiles from Cuba. And so the world avoided a nuclear holocaust. But in order to get the Soviets to pull their missiles out, we had to make a deal. You mean the one where the U.S. agreed to remove its IRBMs from Turkey? No. The Jupiter IRBMs deployed in Turkey were obsolete, and we were going to get rid of them anyway. They had no strategic value whatsoever to either the U.S. or the Russians. The Turkey deal was a ruse, a cover story that was fed to the other intelligence agencies around the world. So what did the Russians really want? Sokolov. They wanted us to return Sokolov. You mean the Soviets pulled out of Cuba just to get their hands on Sokolov? That's right. What the hell was he working on? At the time, we had no idea. We were running out of time. It was either give up Sokolov or risk full-scale nuclear war. In the end, we had no choice. President Kennedy gave in to Khrushchev's demand. The next day, I got Sokolov out of the hospital handing him over to agents on the eastern side. Sokolov kept on screaming, save me, until he disappeared from my side. Then a month ago, we received some new information from one of our moles. About Sokolov? Yes. He was taken back to the research facility and forced to continue working on the weapon in question under KGB supervision. What's more, it's on the verge of completion. So what kind of weapon is it? Something to do with space rockets? No. Missiles. Same technology. I guess you're right. We don't know the details, but it appears to be a new kind of nuclear device. For half a year now, the Soviets have been conducting frequent nuclear tests at semi-palatinsk. Something to do with the weapon, I assume. We're talking about a secret weapon so big that Khrushchev was ready to pull out of Cuba to get it back. Is Sokolov still in a facility? No. According to our intelligence, he's in Selino Yask, a place in the mountains about three miles to the west that's known as the Virgin Cliffs. The Virgin Cliffs? Nice name for a virtuous mission. <laughs> they moved him there just recently. Why? 
Apparently, they're conducting a field test of the weapon, but it's our best chance to get him back. This mission would never have been possible if he was still in the research facility. This is our last chance. Sokolov must have known that too when he contacted us. Yeah, it's like a total, um, total like James Bond style, um, <laughs> like briefing. Bond sits in the office with M, gets his fancy British mission briefing. So I'll try, maybe I'll try and take notes as we go and like the story stuff. Um, if the click clacking of the, of the gamer dude Listen keyboard. Your mission is to infiltrate Selino Yask in the Soviet mountains. Ensure the safety of Sokolov oh, cool. and bring him back to the west. If my click clacking of the gamer keyboard doesn't, uh, you know, mess with you. First person mode. If we don't get Sokolov back before that weapon is complete, we'll be facing a major crisis. The clock is ticking. So once we've confirmed the rescue of Sokolov, stand by at the recovery point. A recovery balloon will be dropped at that point. Helium will be pumped into the balloon to inflate it. The process takes about 20 minutes. Once it's complete, the gunship's arm will latch onto the balloon and pull it up. The Fulton surface to air recovery system. I'm familiar with the theory. Take it easy. It's been combat proof. Well, that's David Hayter's voice, but he's got blonde hair. You think Sokolov is up to it? I'm confused. The shock will be less than during a parachute jump, and the arm can handle up to 500 pounds. So you're planning on going over the border in a single combat talent? She's equipped with two six-barrel 20mm Vulcan cannons, as well as two 40mm machine guns. Sounds like she could hold her own against a battalion of tanks. Excuse me, who's that? fuel in the reserve tank, we're facing a four-hour time limit. If all goes well, it shouldn't take more than a few hours. Home in time for dinner. But if anything goes wrong, you'll be eating dinner, breakfast, and all the rest of your meals in the jungle. Is that paramedic? Because, um, I need an ambulance, dude. Oh my god. Nice blonde haired naked snake at your service, ma'am. Landing in the jungle. Oof. Yep. Oh, okay. Well, there goes my bag. Flawless landing, guys. Flawless. Oh, <laughs> you gotta love the snake landing shot. Hero landing. Views, baby. All right, take off that anteater snout of yours, my man. Now give me a look at your face, please. Let me see ya. Metal Gear Solid. No! No! It is Raiden. What? Aren't I a kid at this time? I'm a child soldier. I don't look like a child soldier. That's Jack. Hold on a minute, guys. Jack, but voiced by David Hayter and not Quinton Flynn? Okay, so that's the original. And that's for oh, being out of control. The camera angle like this is so good, baby. Okay, guys, I'm heavily confused. So I literally identified him straight away as like, he's got Raiden's hair. But he's supposed to be a kid. Oh, this is gonna get weird. Was like the child soldier Jack based off of 
David you Hayden, copy. Jack. You're already in enemy territory, and somebody might be listening in. From here on out, we'll be using code names to refer to each other. Your code name for this mission will be Naked Snake. I'll be referring to you as Snake from now on. You're not to mention your real name. Snake? What, you don't like snakes? What do you mean? You've eaten one before, haven't you? In survival training. <laughs> Snake eater. Yeah. I'm glad to hear that. I don't know if I'd ever order one in a restaurant, but... Be careful. You might not have a choice. What about you, Major? What should I call you? Hmm. Let's see. I'll be... I'll be Tom. Call me Major Tom. Oh, and Snake? Yeah. The crew isn't watching anymore. You can take off the disguise now. Good idea. Oh. This isn't right. Oh. Time for the snake to shed Thank his skin. Thank you. Confusion. Ground control to Major Tom, baby. As I was getting confused there. <laughs> Weird! He's wearing a ja jack... Jack? There we go. <laughs> That's the introduction that we need. Hello, snake! There we go, baby! It's good to be back. It's good to be playing a snake. And not Jack Snake. That was such a... Kojima, you're so weird, man. You're so weird. Dude, I'm so hype. I'm so hype! <laughs> Can you hear me, Major Tom? This is Snake. Kept you waiting, huh? This will be Kept a you sneaking waiting. mission. You must you just not spoke be seen to him. by the enemy. He just, just wants to do no his quote. Of your presence. Is that clear? This kind of infiltration is waiting, the Fox huh? unit's speciality. In other words, weapons and equipment to procure on site. That goes for food as well. You're completely naked, just as your name implies. Uh -huh. Great. <laughs> now I see why you asked me if I like snakes. I suppose calling me Snake was your idea of a joke, too. No. There's a good reason for that. I'll tell you later when the time is right. Gotcha. Getting back to the subject, how exactly am I supposed to feed myself? You've been issued a knife and a tranquilizer gun. Use them to hunt for food. You'll also find some medical supplies in your backpack. Yeah, about the backpack. I oh. lost it in a tree on the way down. I see. Well, you'd better go back and get it then. You know where it is? No problem. I can see it from here. It's stuck on a branch. To climb a tree, stand in front of a tree that's covered in ivy and press the action button. I'll be monitoring your progress over the radio. We can't risk violating Soviet airspace, but I'll be in the gun. Five. My frequency is 140.85. I'll give you a call if I need to talk to you. If you need to talk cool. to me, use the send function. Okay, Snake. Go get your backpack. Go get your backpack. All right, Major Tom. Personal info, age 55 from Portsmouth. I'll do it. Okay, like, this is legitimately incredible. I'm so excited. I still can't uh, walk in a crouch, but that's that's fine. I can only sit in a crouch. Um, this is so cool. Okay, so I can still use the radio this way, right? Yeah. And he said to send. I'm going to have to figure out how to come on. Let me let me figure out how to give him a call. Oh, so that's OK. That makes sense. So the send is just the ch the frequency in the middle. So this is the pre-built ones and then I can tune it. OK, snake. Lovely. First, you need to find that backpack you lost on the way down. Your backpack got caught on a tree to the north. Try heading in that direction. I'm just still like, I'm just thinking it's so funny though. I'm still thinking about the, um, starting it off with a Jack disguise. It's just so silly. It's classic. Can I eat mushrooms? Can I capture frogs? Let me capture the frog. <laughs> Um, alright, so I can apparently see the backpack and it's an ivy covered tree, so I'm assuming it's just like, it's literally that one, okay. And then we just have to focus on feeding ourselves, guys.
This is so bizarre. Alright. Let me get up. I have to get used to these controls again. Me just going, what is the action button again? Okay. Let me get this, and then let me get that. Nice. And then let me get that. Why is the bottom of my screen all black? What happened? Why did you do that? I see you've retrieved your backpack, Snake. To equip a weapon, it's necessary to take it out of your backpack. In the survival viewer, choose weapon from the backpack. Your available weapons will be displayed in a window in the upper left. From that list, choose the weapon you want to equip and press the enter button. For other equipped items, just do the same thing from item. Got it. Use the survival viewer backpack. Yep, that's right. Survival is fundamental to this mission. After you've been out in the field for a while, your stamina will start to drop. If your stamina gets too low, it'll affect your performance. You won't be able to shoot accurately, for example, and your wounds won't heal as smoothly. Keep an eye on your stamina so you don't run out. To recover lost stamina, you can hunt for local flora and fauna. You can use either your tranquilizer gun or your knife to hunt. My only weapon is a Mark 22 Hush Puppy tranquilizer gun? That's right. It's been fitted with its own suppressor. However, the suppressor will deteriorate every time you fire. No! Once its durability reaches zero, the noise suppression effect will be gone. So don't get too trigger happy with it. The suppressor's durability is shown in the icon. Any weapons and equipment beyond what you're carrying Can now, we repair it? you'll have to find as you go. Or find I new have ones. to find my own weapons and equipment? Whose crazy idea was this anyway? Solo covert actions are standard Fox operating procedure. You can't leave any traces of your presence. No weapons, equipment, footprints, sweat, or bodily waste. The same goes for bullets and cartridges too. Your presence in enemy territory is already a violation of international conventions of warfare. There aren't supposed to be any American soldiers in Russia. It could spark an international incident. You can't let anyone see you. You can't let the enemy know you're there. This is a stealth mission. You're a ghost snake in every sense of the word. And there'll be no rescue if you're captured. The military and US government will deny any involvement in the affair. Then I'll just have to take care of myself, huh? I'm afraid so. You've been given a fake death pill for that purpose. SIS guidelines stipulate that soldiers on covert ops like this one be issued a potassium cyanide capsule. Tape it to your body so you can take it when you need to. How generous of you. Use it if you're taken prisoner by the enemy. It'll send you into a state of false death for a short time. Fooling them into thinking that I'm really dead. So how do I come back to life? Just take the revival pill. You mean that thing they put in my tooth before the mission? That's the one. But be careful. If you remain in a state of false death for too long, nothing will be able to bring you back. Remember that. I'll keep it in mind. You said this was a solo mission, right? Right. I guess that means I can't count on any reinforcements. Correct. The mission rests entirely in your hands. A real one-man army. Relax. There's a support team ready to back you up over the radio. Who? I'll introduce them to you. This time, survival is of utmost importance. The first member of the support team will be in charge of monitoring your physical condition, acting as a medic, so to speak, as well as recording your mission data. Oh. She's a member of Fox as well, and she's here on the gunship with me. She? Hello, Snake. I'm paramedic. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, paramedic. As in a medic who comes in by parachute. Aren't you going to tell <laughs> me your real name? Are you going to tell me yours, Mr. Snake? I'll tell you My yours. Name, uh, it's John Doe. Oh, and yeah. they call you Jack for short. You're a regular Captain Nemo. A name means nothing on the battlefield. After a week, no one has a name. What's <laughs> your name? Jane Doe. Very funny. <laughs> I wasn't joking, but I'll tell you my name only if you manage to make it back alive. My it's a date. frequency is 145.73. It's a date, baby! She's also in charge of recording your mission data. Whenever you want to save, send a message over the reserved save frequency, 140.96. So saving lets me record my mission data. That's right. It also records the state of your health. Good to know. There's one more person I want to introduce you to, Snake. Huh? 
Speaking of snakes, you remember the boss, don't you? A legendary soldier and your mentor. Actually, it was the boss that got the DCI's authorization in the first place. She's going to be serving as Fox's mission advisor. The boss is? Okay. She also helped me plan this mission. She and I were at SAS together. Jack, is that you? How many years has it been? Boss? That's right. It's me. <sighs> Unknown age. Talk to me. She unknown. Voice. It's been five years, 72 days, and 18 hours. He loves her. You've lost weight. You can tell just by the sound of my voice. Of course I can. I know all about you. Really? Well, I don't know anything about you. What's that supposed to mean? Why'd you disappear on me all of a sudden? I was on a top secret mission. Hmm. You didn't need me anymore. But there were still so many things I wanted you to teach me. No, I taught you everything you needed to know about fighting techniques. I taught you all I could. The rest you needed to learn on your own. Techniques, sure. But what about how to think like a soldier? How to think like a soldier? I can't teach you that. A soldier needs to be strong in spirit, body, and technique. And the only thing you can learn from someone else is technique. In fact, technique doesn't even matter. What's most important is spirit. Spirit and body are like two sides of a single coin. They're the same thing. I can't teach you how to think. You'll just have to figure it out for yourself. Listen to me, Jack. Just because soldiers are on the same side right now doesn't mean they always will be. Having personal feelings about your comrades is one of the worst sins you can commit. Politics determine who you face on the battlefield. And politics are a living thing. They change along with the times. Yesterday's good might be tomorrow's evil. Is that why you abandoned me? No, it had nothing to do with you. I already told you, Jack, I was on a top secret mission. A soldier has to follow whatever orders he's given. It's not his place to question why. But you're looking for a reason to fight. You're a natural born fighter, but you're not quite a soldier. A soldier is a political tool, nothing more. That's doubly true if he's a career soldier. Right and wrong have no place in his mission. He has no enemies and no friends. Only the mission. You follow the orders you're given. That's what being a soldier is. I do whatever I have to to get the job done. I don't think about politics. That's not the same thing. Sooner or later, your conscience is going to bother you. In the end, you have to choose whether you're going to live as a soldier or just another man with a gun. There's a saying in the Orient, loyalty to the end. Do you know what it means? Being patriotic. It means devoting yourself to your country. Being I follow the president and the top brass. The patriots. I'm ready to die for them if necessary. Sons the of liberty. The president and the top brass won't be there forever. Once their terms are up, others will take their place. I follow the will of the leader. No matter who's in charge. People will they get the assassinated? The missions. Then who does? The times. People's values change over time. And so do the leaders of a country. So there's no such thing as an enemy in absolute terms. The enemies we fight are only enemies in relative terms, constantly changing with the times. As long as we have loyalty to the end, there's no point in believing in anything, even in those we love. And that's the way a soldier's supposed to think. The only thing we can believe in with absolute certainty is the mission, Jack. All right, but do me a favor. What is it? Call me Snake. Snake? Oh, right. Your code name is Snake. It suits you well. That's right. The legendary unit that the boss put together during World War II was a snake. The Cobra unit. A group of heroes that brought the war to an end and saved the world. As long as you've got a legendary hero backing you up, you'll be fine. Isn't that right, Snake? Yeah. I can't think of anyone else I'd rather have with me. Oh, and one more thing, boss. Yes? It's good to hear your voice again. Same here. After all, who knows if either of us will make it out alive. Snake? You are always best at urban warfare and infiltrating buildings. But this is the jungle. Survival is going to be key. Those CQC techniques I taught you are sure to come in handy. CQC? 
Close quarters combat, huh? I've been in the Green Berets for the past few years. I'm probably pretty rusty. Not to worry. I'll be here to help you remember. After all, this is your first actual survival mission. I'll be supporting you over the radio. Where are you, boss? Next to the Major? The boss is communicating with us by radio from aboard a permit-class submarine in the Arctic Ocean. My frequency is 141.80. Call me if you need my advice on battle techniques. Gotcha. Your mission is to retrieve Dr. Sokolov. Dr. Sokolov is being held in an abandoned factory located to the north of your current position. The boss is like Master Miller, except heavy combat and not don't let anyone snake. see you. Don't forget that this is a stealth mission. The boss is the master of Naked Snake, as Master Miller was the Snake. mentor Try of to Solid Snake. The basics of CQC. He's a little noob, just like me. We get to and learn together. Mission now. Cool, cool guys. Okay. Sonar sensor, great. Motion detector, great. AP sensor, great. The revival pill, the fake death pill, which we have five of, so that's if we get caught. Cigar, scope, none. Weapons, knife. Oh, we got the directional microphone. Oh. Um, yep. Yeah. And then that's aiming, first person, all good. Right trigger to equip, unequip on the fly. This is a game for patient gamers <laughs> who don't want to get straight into the action right away um, because then they'll miss out on so much. So that's interesting. So I've just taken down a couple of notes. So the Cobra unit was the inspiration for, for the name Snake. Um, so Sokolov is who we're after, who's defected. We're simping for paramedic because, oh my god, uh, the boss and Jack slash John slash Snake have a weird connection that's like, <laughs> we got some romantic tension, I don't know. Are they just really close, you know, the bond between mentor and student, you know? But yeah, it's weird how our name is John Doe, you know, it's, it's Snake's name, but also they're using Jack. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'm, I'm currently fresh out of the Green Berets. So there you go. Figuring it out as we go along. Let's move in. So we have a, we have to hunt for, f oh, there's a snake right here. Can I, uh... Can I kill snake with knife? Nice. Nice. Red snake? R snake? What is that? Uh, no? Oh, it's, it'll be my survival viewer, right? Food, right? Cool. Giant anaconda, not eaten yet. Taste unknown. Calorie mate. <laughs> Not eaten yet. Taste unknown. Interesting, guys. Okay, killed my first snake. Um, and that's when we can check our backpack, which actually has a total weight. Oh, that's that's cool. And camouflage of the face and uniform. Oh, we can actually put the mask on. That's so stupid. No comment. No comment. Mm, no comment. <laughs> Uniform. Oh, look how cool that is. Uh, squares. I love that we actually get a bunch of, um, oh my God, yes. <laughs> cool. All right, I actually kind of love this though. This is, this is great. All right, I will just leave it as standard for now. I'm so glad that we can access the options screen without having to look into a um, 
without having to look into a like you know do the thing in Metal Gear Solid 2 where we had to turn it on to get the motion sensor so we can equip the sonar which detects animals with sound waves and then we can emit sound waves with the left stick press the LS button aha uh -huh. But it has battery. Okay, okay, okay. There's another snake. Nice guys, we're killing we're killing animals. We starting off we starting off slow. And motion detector that detects an object's motion does not detect stationary objects. So all of the animals we could find on the motion detector as well, but it consumes its battery. It's interesting that when you go through certain areas, it changes the aspect ratio. There's so many minor details and things about this game. That's really cool. Dramuchids. That's right, I know how to pronounce things. Swampland. Alright, let's equip this. Unequip it. Can we get ourselves a, a butterfly? Hey ya! Hey ya! Hey ya! I didn't call it a butterfly knife for nothing. We can chop grass, dude. We can mow the lawn. Are they... <laughs> All right. This is this is amazing. All right, so we can do a little little forward jab, as well as a bit of a uh, bit of knife dancing. Hiya! Learning the ropes, guys. Me and me and Naked Snake, we're we're brand new. Okay, that is, that is, okay. We're 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 snake eaters, not crocodile eaters. This is not, I don't. Can we tranquilize a crocodile? That water's gonna make noise. Can we tranquilize a crocodile? Like. Oh, that guy's doing something. Can I? Can I now take this guy out with a knife? Oh, no! No! I, I sunk in the... Oh, no, it's quicksand! Snake! Oh, my God. Snake! 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 All right. Unfortunately, guys, we got bitten by a crocodile or an alligator. One of the two. I, I'll, I'll only know once I've killed it. Um, and then we drowned in quicksand. So we're going to go for this one instead. Hello, sir. Where's your head? I don't know where it is. So there it is. Hey, yeah. 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 Jab him. Nope. Oh god. Don't drown. Get him. Nope. I'm, I'm going to die again. It's all. It's all in the trial and error. We might be able to just slowly get him. I'm getting you. Hold on. No! <laughs> Let me kill him! Snake, do you read? Snake! You're almost dead! Major. Snake, are you alright? Yeah. No, I'm fighting okay. an alligator, dude. You're far from okay. Look at your life gauge. You're on your last leg. No. I can still... <laughs> See? Snake, this is a solo sneaking mission. Do you know what that means? Don't yeah. fight alligators? No, you don't. Huh? It means there's no backup, no cavalry. If you're taken out, nobody is there to take your place. I'm trying to eat an alligator. Pull out for now and recuperate. Find a hiding place and get some rest. Your life gauge will gradually recover with time. But the speed of your life gauge recovery depends on the level of your stamina gauge. So get plenty to eat, then get some rest. Interesting. You hear me? Do you hear me? 
Yes, mum. Yes, mum. All right. So, in other words, move. All right. So if I just lie down, my health gradually comes back. But come on, guys. We can we can do this, right? We can. We can kill this guy. I believe. We got this. How's he not waking up? We don't know, but we're stabbing him. Look at this. He's bleeding out. Come on. Oh, hang on. All right. Oh, I've got him, boy. Yeah, victory. Guys, we got. We eaten. We eaten good tonight. Indian gavial. You didn't tell me if it was an alligator or a crocodile, guys. I can't tell the difference. Let's eat it. Not too bad. Indian caviar was tasty. <laughs> Guys, we did it. I, we know how to do it. You just have to go prone and just jab them in the neck until they die, until they die. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. I risked my life for that, and uh, we got it. I kind of want more. I want more. But I know I shouldn't. It's absolutely hilarious. <gasps> can I can I have beehive? Can I can I have beehive guys? Hey yeah. Hey yeah. Run away. What did we just get? Hornet's Nest, baby. Baltic Hornet's Nest. All right, so we're at full stamina. So um, in terms of... They just want us to find a place to get some rest. Do so we just lie down? And then just gradually wait for our health to come back? Does our health come back if we move? Yes. I'm going to keep moving. And just avoid these. All right, so you can also get Hornet's Nests. Eat that honey. Actually, no, wait, hang on. I just remembered that there was something in the grass. Ah! The grass here. I saw it before when I was trying to shoot it. Bug juice. How, how would I, how could I have missed the bug juice? It's not food. What's bug juice? Is it a weapon? Is it in my backpack? Sorry guys, give me a sec. Give me a sec. Backpack. Where's my where's my bug juice? I need to know. Is it oh is it camouflage? No. You put bug juice on your face? No? I guess we'll never know. But we have bug juice, guys. And maybe maybe that'll be useful. And now we're going to sneak across to this one and get this as well. Just hanging out with the Indian gavials. Is there anything in this grass? No, just a lot of uh, just hanging out with my with my boys. All right, guys, it's been real. Sorry that I killed one of your bros, but I but I was hungry. And uh, those hornets won't be bothering you any longer because I'm the man. Who gets the honey in this house? This is like genuinely amazing. Hiya! We're just gonna just murder all the snakes. We are the snake eater, guys. Now I think, judging by, I need to keep. Wait a minute. I'm gonna call some people on the codec as well in a sec. Just give me a sec. Three empty slots. Does that mean? I'm pretty sure that might mean that we have a... Are we just able to carry infinite amount of stuff? Because it looks like the the food is not counted in the backpack weight, which is great. But I don't know if we've got a maximum amount of food that we can carry. The menu speed's really good. No, we got another one. So what are these three empty slots for? 
This is this is incredible. Look at this. Never eaten a food like this before. Taste unknown. Cool. So you can view them. Man, man, really do be carrying this in his back pocket, though. <gasps> Said crocodile. It te tells you more. You all right? Tried it. Was tasty. Large crocodile, baby. Thanks to the game for letting me know. So it looks like we can just keep hoarding food, which is uh, which is great for me. And then eventually, I'm gonna get my health back after getting knocked out by a crocodile. Time to do some codec calls, baby. Optional first person is so good. Two enemy soldiers. They're probably KGB troops sent to guard Sokolov. I'm gonna shoot that guy's radio, boys. And grenades. We shooting that guy's radio. Snake, your presence in Soviet territory is already a violation of international law. We can't let the Kremlin find out that the CIA and the American government are involved. Contact with the enemy is strictly prohibited. Don't engage them in battle either. This is a stealth mission. Can't even Got take them out. Okay. The major is right. The point of this mission is to sneak through the jungle without being seen. I'm so good the at stealth, guys. It's fine. On how well you use your camouflage. Man's never been caught in his life. Change your camouflage by selecting camouflage from the survival viewer. The uniform option lets you pick your uniform, while the face option lets you change your face paint. Choosing camouflage that blends in with your surroundings will help you conceal yourself more effectively. Also, don't forget that anything that moves will stand out in the jungle. If you just stand up and run around like an idiot, you're bound to be spotted. <laughs> but if you crawl, but that's what stand, I do. You should be able to sneak by without being noticed. You can see how effective your camouflage is by looking at the camo index. The camo index shows how well your current camouflage blends in with the surrounding area. The higher the value, the harder you are to spot and vice versa. The key is to make yourself one with nature. Keep that in mind as you go along, okay? Okay. We are 40% effective. And then if we're in the grass, we are 85% effective. What if we bump up those numbers? You know? Hey, paramedic. Ew. I see you've captured a giant anaconda. Are you busy? The giant anaconda is believed to be the largest snake in the world in terms of weight and diameter. It's not poisonous, but its large size makes it extremely powerful. They uh, say it me. even eats crocodiles. Not to me. Its only natural predator is man. And snake. And snake. And snake. The giant anaconda is a very large snake, but you should be able to capture it alive using the tranquilizer gun. Got it. So how does it taste? I knew you were going or to ask me Or if you were a madman like Glad me. I didn't disappoint you. So? Well, the guide says it tastes all right. Good. I'll have to try some. Ugh. No, you need to be impressing paramedic, not disgusting her snake. Never talk to me again. Camouflage is an indispensable tool when you're sneaking through the jungle. To use camouflage, first press the start button to go to the survival viewer. Then select camouflage and press the enter button. Select uniform to select battle fatigues and face to select face paint. Choose battle fatigues that match the surrounding environment. The most effective camouflage Naked, is attained always. by selecting fatigues that blend in with the environment. Camouflage patterns that stand out in your surroundings will attract attention. All right. You're a tutorial. Let me talk more to paramedic. Talk to me I about alligators. You yourself a reticulated python. The reticulated python is said to be the longest snake in the world. The biggest ones can grow up to 10 meters in length. Although they're not poisonous, they're still very dangerous, so be careful around them. 
they have and this a game teaches you about swallow, history whole, and also large animals like fun facts about animals. Their most distinguishing feature is the mesh pattern of their scales. I'm learning. This pattern acts as a highly effective natural camouflage. If you think there might be a reticulated python about, pay close attention to your surroundings. Otherwise, you could get bitten before you even know it's there. It's a huge snake, but you should be able to capture it alive by using the tranquilizer gun. I'll bet if you capture one and throw it at an enemy, it'll give him a good scare. Interesting. Right. But how do they taste? <laughs> do they taste good? You're actually going to eat one. Why else would I be asking? Cannibal. What was that? <laughs> Nothing. Let's see what the guide says. Ah, you're in luck. It says they taste pretty good. Good. I can hardly wait. Ugh. So if we tranquilize it, then we can pick it up and capture it alive. And then we're, if we're sneaking, we can go heat and throw a snake out. Pocket snake! And, uh, <laughs> and send it to them. Let's keep talking, because we caught an alligator, I mean a crocodile as well. I see you've captured an Indian gavial. Yes. The Indian gavial is a crocodile that it. originally lived in freshwater regions in India and Nepal. Why are Indian crocodiles way out here? They're captive crocodiles that were brought here for research purposes, but escaped and became wild again. Indian gavials are large creatures. Adult males grow to over six meters in length. You'll never catch one alive, even if you use the tranquilizer gun. I tried tonight. the meat. It was great. Well, it was it great! Was. But be careful when capturing an Indian gavial. Normally they're cowardly creatures, but the ones in the forest there are belligerent. Apparently they attack humans. What do you I mean? have learned. They weren't the direct subject of any serious research, but some think they may have become violent as a side effect of the atomic research that was conducted nearby. Radioactive crocodiles, baby. I see you've got yourself a Baltic hornet's nest. Baltic hornets are a variety of hornets that inhabit that area. The difference between them and other hornets is that they produce honey in their nests. Inside the nests are larvae, pupa, and adults. You can eat them all. In particular, the honey you find inside the nest is delicious and full of nutrients. It's easy to digest and helps pep you up when you're feeling tired. In short, it's the perfect survival food. Honey can also be used as a burn ointment. When honey is applied to a burn, it creates a protective coating over the skin. When you knock down a hornet's nest, a burn ointment will appear along with it, so don't forget to pick it up. Of course, the hornets aren't going happen? to give up their nest without a fight. I have fight. to go back. If you knock a nest down, a large swarm of hornets will come flying out, so be careful. I ran over that area, though. We're going back, boys. Please still be there. Give me the burn gel. Nature's burn gel. Give it to me. Um, I low-key just love finding cool, interesting new things that I can call um, that I can call paramedic about and be like, look, I got a cool special thing. And then I impress her and she's like, ooh, you got a hornet's nest. We're gonna impress her. Okay, so it's just given us a new oh! <laughs> I didn't expect that. All right, I need. Hang on, I need him to move a bit, or I can just tranquilize him. Sir, I'm gonna need you to. Oh no! Wait. You, all right, you've moved, and we might be able to. All right. Um. So apparently, it's gonna drop some. Uh, drop some gel for me. Maybe if we shoot it from a distance, then the hornets won't come. Nice, it dropped us two things. It didn't drop us two things last time. But it did now. Alright, we got the we got the ointment, which is now a medical related item. See, usually right, in Metal Gear Solid 2, it had like categories, and then when you went to the category, you could then scroll across, like you had your medical related items and stuff like that. This one is similar to Metal Gear Solid 1 where it doesn't have that. Is it in the Do I have to do I have to choose and adjust it from the backpack? 
Ah, uh, all right, I get it now. All right, so I can actually choose what to have in the... Okay, this makes so much more sense. Okay, I can choose what to have in the backpack from the menu. Okay, this makes sense. So... There's the bug juice. Okay, so you can choose what's in, choose what's out. Cool. Well, where's my, uh, where's my ointment at? I, I picked up ointment, guys, and all that we have, we have the bug juice that I picked up. I want to know what the bug juice does. Maybe the ointment is food. All right, bug juice, bug juice. Bug repellent keeps away hornets and leeches while lasting. Oh, leeches, oh my God. This is great. Kojima's like, I'm going to put a game in the 60s and um, just literally make this the best jungle that I could make. So realistic. Kojima, you're a madman. Snake, that area should be inhabited by tree frogs. The tree frog is a green frog that's found throughout Asia. It's arboreal, spending most of its time in shrubs and bushes. Use the tranquilizer gun to catch one alive. I bet you could scare an enemy good if you tossed one at him. But the tree frogs that live in that jungle are a lot bigger than ordinary tree frogs. They've got an appetite, huh? You've got a one-track mind, don't you? But seriously... I'm actually so hungry right theory. now. However, there are people who think it's a mutation caused by nuclear testing and waste from the research facility. Do you think they're safe to eat? Is that all you ever think about? What yes. else is there? Lots. Like what? Like why a frog would get so big in the first place. Whether it's a temporary phenomenon created by a unique environment, or a permanent mark of evolution, or a product of the toxic waste coming out of the research facility. Paramedic, is the waste I will introduce you to good food it sometime. Humans are interfering with the ecosystem. We'll go out to dinner, it we'll really eat some snakes, we'll eat some frogs. Between... This isn't interesting. Oh fine, be that way. So, how about it? You mean is it edible? Yeah. Hmm, well, I guess it's probably okay. Probably? I don't know. The guide doesn't say anything. Pretty useless guide, if you ask me. Well, try one for dinner and you can help improve it. Let's get a frog. Um, I love that I can hold it, press it, and aim. Cool. Um, let's... Uh, this takes, it takes so long to open up the, the radio compared to everything else. Uh, let's unequip the bug juice. Cool that you can equip and unequip stuff, uh, which I really like. Now weapons, it means that I could also be like, regulated python, reticulated python, I'm going, <coughs> pocket snake. Can I throw out an alligator? Hornet's nest, hornet's nest. Um, oh, you could throw out the hornet's nest. Food. Guys, the, the burn gel. The burn gel is not there either. So I, I don't know, I don't know what to tell you, to be honest. I do not know what to tell you in terms of where that burn gel went, but we have picked it up. So maybe it's like an auto, maybe it's automatically applied to us. It's just like something that we have as like insurance. I want to see if there's a frog here somewhere. Are they chilling? We're on the hunt for a frog. Who cares about the mission? I'm gonna get trapped by these guys in a second. We will we will get frogs at some point. They're probably in this grass actually. Hold on. Let me just walk through here. Alright, we got any frogs in here? Any frogs? We got snake.
Yo, is that a fruit? And can I cut it down? Yo! What is that? We got fruit! What about this one? How do I... Nice, you can turn food fruit into collectible fruit. Oh, I killed the frog and the fruit in one shot. I gotta tell paramedic about this immediately. Paramedic! Looks like you found a galova. I captured a fruit! Galova. Yeah, it's a fruit that's found only in that region. It's related to the jackfruit, which is commonly found in Southeast Asia. Jackfruit, huh? Yep, he's a cannibal. Huh? <laughs> I didn't say anything. No, I'm sure you... I said, I'm sure you'd like it. Oh. Golova means head in Russian. It's probably called that because the fruit grows to about the size of a human head. It's supposedly pretty good to eat with a uniquely sweet flavor. The fruit itself is fairly large, so you can make a meal out of it. Golovas grow directly off the trunk of the tree. If you're running low on stamina, it might be a good idea to keep an eye on the tree trunks. Awesome. Uh, I also captured a frog. You want to talk about I it? I see you have a calorie mate. A okay. calorie mate. The thing you're holding now? Oh, the little block that looks like a cookie? <laughs> Try it. It's pretty good. Okay. But what is this thing? Never seen anything like it. Calorie Mate is an energy supplement that contains all the proteins, lipids, vitamins... Guys, why didn't you tell me this game is so food-based? I'm so hungry. <laughs> it's a well-balanced food. Because of that, it's just perfect for giving your body the nutrition it needs in combat. It sounds like a space age food. Kojima was so hungry when he made this game. He was so hungry and you know it. Yeah, and it'll help balance out all this jungle food I'm eating. It's easy and quick to eat, so it's perfect when you're running late for an important mission in the morning. I've never been late for a mission. Really? Aren't you always keeping people waiting? <laughs> it's Kept you waiting, keep huh? Track of your calorie intake and receive the nutrition your body needs, so it's good for losing weight, too. All of the geisha girls in Japan use it for watching their calories. Is that why they're all so slim? Right. And any diet where you eat nothing at all is bad for the body. I see. You seem to know a lot about Japan, don't you? Yes, I love Japan. Me too, paramedic. We should go there sometime. It's a day. Snake, that area is inhabited by magpies. Magpies are members of the crow family. They're distinguishable by their beautiful dark blue and white bodies and their long tails. Their favorite food is insects, but they'll also eat small fish, acorns, and fruit. They're omnivores, which means... They'll eat anything. Like me. Right, just like you, huh? If you use the tranquilizer gun, you should be able to capture magpies alive. Okay. Pocket so bird! You, taste? you always ask me that. Naturally. So? I've never heard of anybody actually eating a magpie, but I suppose there's no reason you couldn't. You don't say. Oh. We are annoying uh, paramedic so much, dude. <laughs> Uh, Sokolov should be at the abandoned factory to the north, so head oh, in that direction. I don't care about the mission. I care about learning about animals with paramedic man. Visibility is poor in the jungle, so you'll be finding yourself in Guys. a lot of unexpected encounters. Naturally, this be means exciting that first quarter's combat to me, will be more important than ever. So I'll have plenty of chances to use CQC then. That's right. In proximity encounters, firing a gun isn't necessarily the best response to every situation. It's only one option among many. Rather than taking the time to draw, aim, and fire a gun, engaging your opponent in hand-to-hand -hand combat can sometimes be a faster and more reliable way of subduing him. Besides, in a sneaking mission like this one, it's too dangerous to go around firing your gun. You'll end up revealing yourself to the enemy. Yeah, I know. You created CQC to deal with exactly this type the of The boss created CQC as a concept. In a it never existed. You'll only have a split second to decide how to attack. Like, what's that use meme of, like, to attack using a weapon, CQC before the, CQC the boss <laughs> to attack using CQC. created it? Just Press people hitting CQC each other with balloons? Once to throw a punch. Pressing it multiple times in succession will allow you to deliver a combo attack. Yes. But striking your opponent is just one aspect of CQC. It doesn't really start to shine until you've got your enemy in a hold. 
Press and hold down the CQC button to grab your opponent with your right hand. Mm -hmm. From there, you can use the left stick to knock your opponent off balance and throw him to the ground. So this, this is the stuff that was in the, uh, in the manual. Blow. If you don't press the left stick, grapple with your enemy until you're behind them and can get your knife to their throat. Grabbing an enemy from behind she had to think about that for a second. against his throat will render him virtually powerless. Nice. From this point, there are several things you can do. By double-clicking the left stick button, you can slit his throat by using your knife. Okay. Move the left stick and press the CQC button to throw the enemy to the ground. Okay. Tap the CQC button rapidly to choke the enemy. We're familiar you can with use that. This to knock him out or even kill him if you do it long enough. Nice. By continuing to hold down the CQC button, you can move around while keeping your grip on the enemy. By pressing the weapon button, you can aim your currently equipped weapon at another enemy. With their comrade acting as a human shield, the enemy will be reluctant to attack you. Okay. Press the left stick button to press your knife against the enemy and demand information. Okay. You'll be surprised at how much you can learn this way. But don't get too complacent. While your enemy may be powerless in your grip, he'll use any opportunity he can to counterattack. She's thinking about it. She's like, hmm. Anything else that I could tell him? No. <laughs> Stops. <laughs> Um, that's really cool. I can't actually wait to try out all of the, uh, the different mechanics. That's going to be really cool. Sorry guys, I got to, we, we're talking to paramedic more. I can just listen to her to talk about Siberian things, right? Cap mushrooms growing in that area. I saw those. The Siberian ink cap is a mushroom from the ink cap family. I need to cut them, I guess. Its life cycle is transitory. As soon as the spores mature, the cap starts to turn black, liquefy, and melt away. And that's why they call it an ink cap. That's right. It doesn't really turn to liquid, but you get liquid in its immature state before it melts away. It's How dare you after that name? Just be sure not to eat them while you're drinking alcohol. Why's that? Ink caps contain coprin, which inhibits the function of aldehyde dehydrogenase. This prevents the body from breaking down alcohol, causing a buildup of acetaldehyde. Meaning? Meaning it will give you the hangover from hell. Oh. Wait a minute. Best what? teacher of all you time. Drink alcohol in the middle of a mission? Wouldn't you? Hell no. Well, I'm knocking a shot back now. What? Just teasing you. Uh, oh, come on. I'm where's smoking. your sense of humor? I need a drink. Where's your where's your sense of humor, paramedic, when I talk about eating frogs? Um actually legitimately after all of that, I am going to actually save my game. Let's do this. Let's use the save function. Saving the game, Snake? Oh, yeah. Checking storage device. First save, baby. See, why couldn't they have made param- Hey, Snake, uh, you ever heard of Godzilla, King of Monsters? No, what is it? It's a movie. You haven't seen it? Nope. It's about this monster I'm called not a Godzilla pop culture guy, who grows apparently. to an enormous size in a nuclear test and goes on a rampage in Tokyo. Nuclear test, huh? <laughs> Top secret briefing file about Godzilla. Right about now. It's just make-believe. Maybe that's why my pants have been so tight lately. Snake, it's a movie, not a report out of Los Alamos. I know. So then what happened? Godzilla is immune to all weapons, and humanity has no way to stop the monster. Dr. Sirizawa develops a new type of weapon, but meanwhile, Godzilla is getting closer and closer to Tokyo, obliterating everything in its path. It was originally a Japanese movie, but they made an American version, too. Obviously I recommend seeing the original Japanese one if you ever get the chance. It's mostly minor. Confirmed stuff, paramedic watches subs over dubs, baby. Well. Where can I see the original? You'll just have to go to Japan. Really? It's a date. That's too bad. Told you. Well, if you wait 40 years, you might be able to see it in America, too. Why is that? 2004 will be Godzilla's 50th birthday. You think they're still going to be making Godzilla movies then? Of course. Everybody loves Godzilla. You sure know a lot about movies. I don't suppose you're the movie-watching type, are you? Not really. Godzilla's timeless. They're still making everything them. everything I know. When the going gets tough. Movies can save your life. Kojima it's can see the future, guys. The he knows that Godzilla will return. never die. That's the magic of movies. No kidding. Well, 
I guess it might at least make a nice distraction. That's the spirit snake. Have a little fun. This is incredible. It's incredible! Um, okay, let's avoid snake. I kind of really like that I can adjust the camera in... Th it's not strictly third person. It's just free control, like free camera movement. So I can literally just like take it to the original, but then also just bring it down. I just love the ability to actually look around. That's the... that's what I'm... That's what I'm happy about, you know, in this in this game. So there's my own footsteps, okay. There's actually just so many details and things to take in. It's actually like it's lot it's really impressive. Um I'm heavily, heavily enjoying this. Heavily enjoying this. And if any of you, if any of you think a comment for me in the comments and go, Oh, he played this game for an hour and a half and man hasn't even got f past the first point in the game. I'm doing it intentionally. We're taking, we're taking our time. And I feel like most of you would probably appreciate that. Um, of me learning everything, paying attention and taking it in slowly. Now we've got, we're finally back here. Where... My health has been slowly, but surely coming back. And we are going to adjust our camouflage. Now, this is all minus, right? Yeah, so this is the best option for us. And then face-wise, also, this is the best option for us. <clears throat> so we've got the best camo at the moment. And if we... Enjoy this stealth mission. Now, by the way, we're not supposed to engage in combat at all, so I guess that means I'm not going to shoot... I'm not going to shoot the... the the radio. I guess we just have to sneak straight past him. He's got nothing to say. Alright. We need to analyze his movement. Wasn't there two? There was a second one, right? They're saying, like, this is a stealth mission. Don't do anything and don't fight him. But then at the same time, it's like, hey, here's all of your close quarters combat and interrogation information. You know? Ooh, what's that way? I don't even I I don't even know the the correct way to go. So I guess I just need to uh, be careful. This looks like a bit of a bonus area. You got a snake in here. Do you have anything to say about the current uh, Cold War that's going on between the Soviets and uh, the U.S., sir? Any any closing statements? Um, on on the the general conflict. No. Well, in that case, you're my next meal. Um, and there's another one there too. Ooh, what's this? A quiet. Hmm. A quiet. The SVD, the Dragonov sniper rifle. Use scope with LB. Press X to hold or release to fire. Adjust scope with W. Uh, and then I have to actually manually equip it. Uh, who's the one that will talk to me about? I feel like the boss would be the one to talk to me about weapons, right? You can only use CQC to grab enemies when your right hand is no. free to grab and pull them toward you. In other words, when you're barehanded or equipped I guess paramedic with a one-handed weapon like a talk survival to me about it as well. or a handgun. You won't be able to grab hold of enemies when equipped with two-handed weapons, such as the assault rifle or weapons such as hand grenades that don't leave your right hand free to control the enemy. So in other words, I can't throw enemies with CQC when I'm holding an assault rifle or a hand grenade. Exactly. Don't forget it. Will paramedic talk to me about the sniper? That area is home to the Sunda Whistling Thrush. The Sunda Whistling Thrush is a bird native to Java and Sumatra. It's distinguished by its large blue body and long beak. It really stands out in the forest. If you're aiming to catch one alive, use the tranquilizer gun. Got it. So... How does it, it taste? taste? Yeah. I don't know. You don't know? The guide doesn't say. You've never eaten I a thrush? I guess there's no reason you couldn't eat them. Oh, I see. But it's nice and plump, so I'm sure it'd make a hearty meal. 
That's a good point. <sighs> Have a sense of humor, paramedic. Um, I'm assuming to we can capture it alive or Get away from me, sir! Do not approach me! Otherwise you become my next meal. Now... Can't see any burbs. I'm assuming you could shoot it and then kill it. Or you can just shoot it and then pick it up and then you've got your, your own little pet bird. I'm not seeing one though. It might be further out here. But I'm curious as to how we're going to handle this, right? <clears throat> Maybe if I go into the backpack and then weapon, I equip sniper rifle, which has 51 shots in it. Um, can we can we put a silencer on it? Nice. We automatically go into first person. LB, adjust scope. I almost just shot it by pre accidentally pressing the X button, so I'm glad I was able to stop that. Uh, dude's gonna go over here, so we're going to go over here. We're not going in. I want to. I want to interrogate, but at the same time, we're told not to engage. You know what I mean? That's sort of the. Um, that's sort of. Ooh, that's sort of the struggle. Um, at the moment. It's like, I want to engage with, like, interrogation tactics while it's just, like, this one guy. Uh, I might save, right? Do you want to save? Yes. Uh, because... Like, let's save so that it's just before, you know, us getting captured and making mistakes. And let's learn, right? Let's, let's, let's learn. Sna so... No! Ah, I pressed the B button by mistake. Snake, have you heard of the Black Legion? This is where I engage part-time in voice acting. Nope, never heard of it. These scientists are investigating a black deep, a place deep in the Amazon called the Black Lagoon. And they get picked off one after the other by this fishman thing. And there was this scene where the heroine um, asks, is going for a swim. I can't read. And the creature sneaks up on her from underwater. Ooh, I thought my heart was going to stop. I mean, of course, the 3D effects in It Came From Outer Space were a lot more intense, but It wouldn't be referring to you coming from outer space, would it? How rude. Why do you say that? Because no one on Earth could be as charming as you. <laughs> Why did I have to skip this? Fine, I'll just get to the point, Snake. Be careful of what's around you when you're in the water. Just imagining you swimming in those jungle rivers make me think of you being attacked by a fishman. I appreciate the concern. Fishmen aren't the only things that will attack you in the water. Really, be careful out there. Okay. And don't be attacking any pretty girls going for a swim either. Are you calling me a fish man? You started it. Guys, we're, we're, we're forming a connection here. We are flirting. It's called witty banter. Um, she's such a nerd about, like, science and animals and movies. Amazing. All right, we've saved the game. So now what we're going to do is we are going to practice. I didn't ask for this. I didn't ask for... Okay, that's weird. That changed without me wanting it to. Okay. We're going to sneak up on this guy. So, knife. So we press the close quarters button, which is this one. To grab him. Just so I don't make a mistake. I can't view the controls. Amazing. Whose kind of bright idea was it to not put the controls in here? So now I'm going to probably press the wrong button, but that's fine. Hello, sir. Just going to sneak behind you. Huh? Ah! No! What is happening here? Don't shoot me. No, okay, hang on. Well, there you go. I already messed up, but we're learning. Hey, yeah. Where was that guy who alerted HQ? All right, we're in evasion mode. 
Um, time to tranquilize some guys, my guys. Where are they? What are they doing? No. No. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Thank you. Go to sleep. Where is that? Where is the patrol guy? Where is he? Where is he? Oh, I'm being shot from over there. Just remember, guys, that I'm just practicing at the moment. I'm just getting used to stuff happening. Is there a guy like in the tree? Didn't I already shoot you? I'm gonna re I'm gonna reload my save, but just so you know, at the moment we are just learning. Okay, so I can still engage in battle, and it's not like everything's just gonna end. Um, but they they're carrying some useful things like grenades and stuff. We can shoot and take out the, the radios, but then that's just still gonna like alert people because they're not checking in. Interesting. Interesting. Um I wanna inter I wanna get used to interrogating, but that guy uh that guy figured me out pretty quick. Alright, I'm going to reload my save. And then we will try and inter interrogate him um, again without getting caught. But I swear there was a I swear there was a second guy as well. But I just I just couldn't see him anywhere. So return to title screen and let's go back in and uh, and try that one again. Um, yeah, I'm I'm curious because. He kind of detected us when we were right behind him, and I just want to—I th I pressed the wrong button as well because I was trying to grab him, and I failed. I failed to do the grab. Now let's see where it actually drops me from the save. Is it in exactly the same spot that I saved? Okay. Where is he? He's behind that tree? Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna interrogate you, sir. Eventually, we'll figure it out, and I will get to interrogating. This might not be the, the best spot to try and do the interrogation, but I want to see that. Also, like, I don't know where the other guy is. Uh, Who's that? Nope. Sir, go to sleep. Go to bed. I failed. Guys, I, I just passed out here. Same as same as you. We woke up here together. Oh my god. 
How did we get- Oh, I'm being shot. Okay, hold on. Now, where is this guy? Oh, there's another guy down there. Okay. Hmm. I don't know if it's worth it to try and interrogate this dude. I think that there'll be... I think there'll be another opportunity to interrogate later. Nice. Got him. Now I want to grab him. There we go. Alright, we grabbed him, right? And now we've got a human shield. Answer me. Answer me. Ooh, cool. Alright, cool. So we can still actually get him in a chokehold if we. Oh god, there's a dude right here. You're now mine. Huh. Wait a minute. We got him. We got him. We got him. Gotcha! Alright, I got a human shield. Don't mess with me, son. There we go, so we can still have free camera movement. Answer me. Oh. No! I'm learning, man! Be patient with me. Cool. Well, you can't answer me when you're knocked out, can you? Nice. Combat practice, baby. Can we knife their radios? We can't knife their radios. But we can knife the hell out of them. <laughs> cool. Okay. Um, am I satisfied with my... Am I satisfied with my practice today? Yes, I am. This is HQ. Patrol here. We've lost sight of the intruder going into high alert. The guy in here somehow. The enemy is still nearby. Pursue and engage him. There's so many, okay. Alright, there's people there's a dude there. Cool. Uh before I go too far, I'm gonna I'm gonna reload again. Uh because that was um that was that was Good practice. So how I can um, how I can grab them and make them mine, you know, and then you can go talk to me or red blood spl splatter everywhere. But um, that's cool. All right, that's our grabbing interrogation uh, practice done. So now we're just going to focus on sneaking through there. We're going to get those mushrooms. We're going to get the bug juice in the trunk. And we're gonna do it stealth-like. Nice and, uh, nice and stealthy, because we are the masters of stealth. Over here. I am very good at stealth. If you don't watch any of my other Metal Gear Solid playthroughs, uh, just take my word for it. I'm really good at stealth. And just impeccable. It's unrivaled, my, my skills at this game. Um... But if I haven't made it clear, this game is incredible. It's it's amazing. I'm having a I'm having an amazing time. Now my man is behind this tree. So I'm going to equip knife. Get mushroom. Crawl through tree trunk. Get bug juice. Keep walking. And then I need to... Okay, we're good. We're good. I can probably just get away with this. If I'm quick, get up. Alright. Okay, so there's birds in the grass that I could get as well, if I'm sneaky enough. But it also makes so much noise. Um, I also have fruit to get, but I don't know... If I can get fruit from... can I? Yes! We can still get the fruit, even though it seems like it's out of reach. Amazing. I don't know how far they can see as well, you know? I don't know how far the soldiers can see ahead of... Uh, ahead of us. There's also a, a tree that I can climb. 
Oh, you saw nothing. You saw nothing. We're climbing a tree now. You saw nothing. He is he is still coming. Please, sir. He doesn't have a radio on though. We can we could take him out. I'm in my little bunny rabbit pose. Don't mess with me. I'll get you. Nothing here. Thank you. We climbing trees, boy. We Tarzan. We Tarzan over here. Oh, that's really cool. So we like we this is assuming that the guards just do not look up and then you could just stealth them from here. Can I? Shoot from here? I can. Ooh. The scouting opportunities. Amazing. And I can get fruit from here. I'll put a knife on. And just do a bit of a... Hey! It's not letting me use the knife. And I'm kind of upset about it. How else am I supposed to get the goddamn fruit? Oh! Okay. Well... Hmm. Hmm. There's fruit up there, guys. How how do we get it? How do we get the fruit? Hmm? Did I not have it equipped? Did I not have the knife equipped? Am I just being silly? No, we just, uh, we can't use... Cannot use the knife. What if we are hanging? Can we use knife while we're hanging? No, we cannot. Which makes sense. If we can't use it while we're standing on it, we can't use it while we're hanging from it. We can't just hold ourselves up with one hand. Alright, there's a guy there. We can hide in that tree. Does this guy have a radio? It's hard to tell. I don't think he does. It can be a little bit hard to tell where I'm actually supposed to go though, you know what I mean? He doesn't have a radio. There's a snake. Turn around, boy, please. All right. It's hard when it... Yeah. Changes the camera angle unwillingly. So I heard talking, so I thought I would listen, but nothing. All right, we can hide in tree. That's good. It's good to know. I guess we go through it. We're supposed to be going there. We could totally interrogate this guy, but it's such a risk. He doesn't have a radio, though. Guys, you're, you're guarding. So slowly, um, I just need him to go over there, and then I can run up through there. Keep walking, buddy. Walking like you got nowhere to be. Oh my god, there's- oh no! I did not even- god damn it. Okay, that should have been paying attention to my surroundings right there. All right, let me have a let me try this angle instead. All right, there's a guy here. Nobody here. Nothing here. Oh, Radio Man's there. We're going for it. We made it. We made it. We sprinted for the finish. <laughs> Do a little barrel roll to get out of there.
No radio, huh? How do we take him? Oh, <laughs> yes, using the environment to your advantage. That smile, he's just like, <laughs> I know what I'm about to do. I know what I'm about to do. Amazing. Wait, let's call someone about it because the game isn't letting us do it. The gauge below your life gauge is your stamina gauge. It shows as gauge, the name suggests gauge, gauge. stamina. As you consume stamina, your natural life regeneration is slowed and your hands shake more. Okay. Your O2 gauge and grip gauge also become shorter. Cool. Excessively low stamina can often impede your mission objectives. Make sure you replenish stamina before that occurs. Okay. Snake, when you knock down a hornet's nest, a there large swarm of hornets will come flying out. If used wisely, this can sow panic among the enemy. But if you're not careful, the hornets may end up attacking you. Mm -hmm. If you're attacked by hornets, wiggle the left stick around and wave your survival knife to shoo them away. Smoke is another useful tool in keeping hornets away. If you're attacked by hornets, I'd advise you to try using a smoke grenade. And if you use waste the a smoke grenade on juice, hornets, the hornets should stay away as long as the effect lasts. Hornets are prone to becoming agitated and aggressive when they see the color black. Their attacks will be more vicious if you're wearing black clothes. If you're attacked by hornets, you should change into white clothes. Is that why beekeepers wear white? Guys, I'm learning so much about life from this game. You can only use CQC to grab enemies when your right hand is free to grab and You are obsessed you. with CQC, words, lady. Talk to me about yourself. Weapon like a survival knife or a handgun. You won't be able to grab hold of enemies when equipped with two-handed weapons, such as the assault rifle Can't you or just... weapons such as hand grenades that don't leave your right hand free to control the enemy. Two-handed so in other words, gun across their neck. Throw enemies with CQC <clears throat> when holding an assault rifle or a hand grenade. Exactly. Don't forget it. All right. I appreciate the CQC assistance, but right now, what I need is a sharp eye. What is that green thing there? Can I use the be the scope, please? Now, how do we? Can we zoom on this thing? How? Yes. What is? What is that, guys? What is this? What's the deal with Frogman? Do we shoot him? Do we shoot Frogman? We should shoot Frogman, right? Innocent little Frogman. Oh my god, he made noise. <laughs> god damn it, buddy! Oh my god. And now there's two guys on the bridge. What are we going to do about this? I didn't even see the two guys until it was way too late. Um... What's wrong? No radio, bitch. Try and call it in. Try and call it in. I dare you. Talk to me. Tell me information, sir. Or I'm throwing you off the cliff. How do we throw him? I forgot. He's knocked out. I want to throw you. I don't know how to do it. I forgot. Get out. Get out of my life. Alright, see you later. I think I handled that pretty well. I think I did alright. And I got a stun grenade out of it. You hide in the bush. Okay. And you? You, uh... You should fall to your death. Because you're... You're awake. Get out of... You should just leave. You should... Or uh, maybe I could just end your, end your life instead. Hey yeah. 
Goodbye, sir. May you rest in peace. And now we've got this guy at the end of the bridge. Okay. Um, I actually think that frog guy making noise up there is absolutely hilarious. Now, there's a guy here that I need to be considerate about. Uh... Huh? What's that? What you want? It's no one. It's no one! What's wrong? Damn it. Go to sleep! Go to sleep a second time! I was supposed to shoot the, um... The radio. It didn't work. I'm sorry. I was supposed to just shoot the radio. It was gonna be chill. Um, let's eat some food. I keep pressing, like, I associate the select button with going into, like, a bag or an inventory. Um, let's eat a reticulated python. Nice. Snake eater, baby. We had to do it. Alright. Um, give me some more mushies. And then I'm gonna drag you guys around. For whatever you've got. And, because we just, we just keep getting bullets and we're full of them, we're just gonna do a bit of that! Oh, uh, why can't I? Yes. Nice, just missed. It. Cool. Good luck calling your friends when you wake up, sir. All right. At least you you don't have to be stealth only. You can you can still get you can still get through and do stuff. And then you just go through into the next area. So we're in Rasvet. Um, we're learning. We're learning. Major, I've reached the abandoned factory where Sokolov is supposedly being held. This place is a dump. I can't see Sokolov from here. The security is pretty tight. There are sentries posted around the perimeter. I wonder how many are inside. Let's get that radio out. Awesome. Your objective, Sokolov, is inside the factory. They should be holding him in a room in the northeast section. Northeast section. Got it. Be careful. Your mission is to bring Sokolov back alive. He must not be exposed to any kind of danger. And do not approach Sokolov while in the alert phase. Right. Oh, and one more thing, Snake. You mean there's more? No, there's always it's just more. that when you get to Sokolov, I want you to tell him something from me. And that is? Sorry for being so late. Is that all? Yes. Understood. Beginning my approach to the target. <clears throat> Alright guys. It's the Sokolov rescue mission in the abandoned building. And I've been playing for two hours now. Just shy of two hours. And I think that is a good point just to say introductory episode, you know? Learning some of the ropes actually you know putting it all together and having having a lot of fun with it um i i'm having a I'm having a lot of fun i think this is this is really awesome so far um all of the the new and exciting uh mechanics like having the camouflage meter and the stamina bar and like hunting for food and like learning about that um and also the adjusted camera angle i i am instantly seeing what everyone's saying about, you know, the improvements to gameplay and all of the additions to, to the gameplay experience as well. And it's, it's incredible. Um, I'm having, I'm having a great time. So I'm going to save my game. Do you want to save? I do want to save. And then we are going to approach this one in the next episode. We're going to do the, the circle of rescue, learn a bunch more and have a good time. But I think not bad, not bad, not bad. Um, really enjoying how the gameplay is being presented to us and the, the options that we're able to, to take in regards to this one. So it was really cool. Snake, have you heard of It Came From Outer Space? And we will yeah, now leave with 
So this astronomer yes. sees a meteor, but it's really an alien spaceship, right? And the aliens start replacing the townspeople with clones and forcing them to help repair the ship. The 3D effects were quite realistic. I've got all the real I can handle here in the jungle. No, you don't get it. Precisely because it's realistic, with the images jumping out of the screen at you, it makes for a nice escape from reality. I have to admit it made my eyes tired, but it was really intense. Unfortunately, they don't make very many of those movies anymore. When did it come out? I was still in college, so probably about ten years ago? Guess I'm out of luck then. You know, they're coming out with household versions of video cassette recorders. One day you'll be able to see old movies anytime you want. <laughs> It'll be like having a movie theater in your own home. Really? It's like if you had a record with movie film etched onto it instead of music. It'll work the same way. You're kidding. No, really. And someday they might make movies where you control the characters yourself. <laughs> Sounds like magic. It'll happen. We're make playing sure you stay alive to see it, Snake. magic right now. Make sure you stay alive to see it. <laughs> Rip. Big Boss's remains made it to made it to 1995. No, sorry, 2005. Um, but there we go, guys. I love that we can save the game and end it with cool little stories. You ever just want to go watch movies with uh, Paramedic? Because I do. It's funny how, like, my opinion literally of, uh, of Rose compared to Paramedic. But that's because it's not a Titanic reference about being lovey-dovey. She's just really passionate about science, man, and movies. Um, great characters so far. I'm enjoying uh, Major Tom. The boss is interesting. I'm excited to learn more about the boss because we know nothing except literally the mentor. And uh, we're uh, we're eating snakes, as the game would suggest. So, guys, I had a I had a lovely time sitting here, and I cannot wait to play more. Um, so, let me know how I went pacing wise, how you felt about me figuring everything out, taking my time because I do really want to take my time. So, this could be like quite a bit of a long playthrough. We'll just have to we'll just have to see how see how things go. We're just taking it easy as we start and get back into get back into the swing of all things Metal Gear. I can't wait to play more, and I'll see you then.